So I, I have a eyesight problem, so I can't see really well. And after that, my organs gone off, kidneys gone off. Why South Indian movies are now like going crazy? Just that nobody paid attention to it till now. That's it. They were always there. Like Bahubali was one of the rare films where people fall in love with villains. I invested in Salute, which is a gin and tonic company. I was just happy I could now find a way to make money off alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> If you make hundred bucks. Mm. Like like what is like, what's oh, the man. You're building great employment business. You give jobs to ten thousand people. You fire five thousand of them. What's the fun in that? Yeah. Do you want to enter politics at any time? Our today's guest is not just an entrepreneur, but he is a star. Usually, people know him as Balal Dev from Bahu Bali, but people don't know that he is an investor, an entrepreneur, and we talked about so many things today that. What is there in South Indian movies that now they are not only nationally but globally dominate? Kar rahi hai. Then we spoke about artificial intelligence. Will Chat GPT three replace all the jobs in the film industry? Then we spoke about how does he make money? Where does he invest money? What does he look before investing in any project? How does he make sure that he leads a proper team? And we spoke about the most important thing: where does he earn money? and his mindset behind creating right blockbuster and choosing the right movies ki wo sari ki sari hit ho jaye वैसे talking about blockbuster stars i want to tell you about one big hit that tata introduced in december 2022 that was their emerging opportunities fund that accumulated approximately 110 crores during the nfo period and has given benchmark beating returns and now they have come up with new fund offer that is their dynamic advantage fund from 18th of march to 31st of march and you can check it out on policy bazaar platform abhi what is new fund offer basically it is first time subscription offer for a new scheme launched by tata where the company will be able to buy shares government bonds and so many other things for you with your money and this will be diversified so you might earn very good returns on that as well and now with tata nfo you can explore this opportunity for starting net asset value of only rupees 10 also 31st march aa raha hai so get a tax benefit under section 80c and 10d you can plan it for your long term investment goals and you can start with as low as rupees 2000 monthly but hurry up because this is a limited time offer valid from 18 to 31st march don't miss this chance of getting promising returns if you want to know more go check it out from policy bazaar's link given in my description you did a movie gazi attack yeah right uh you know whenever i see like a super patriotic movie i get super patriotic i'm like maro salo ko like you know that, that 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 vibe comes out like do you do you get that, get in that zone as well where while you're doing the movie because as an audience we all get it I'm sure you must have heard that from many people. Like when the first time people are watching, like they get super into it and they want the protagonist to just just win for the nation. You're not doing it for a movie anymore. Yeah, I mean, everything that you play, there's part of that character becomes who you are. Hmm. And uh, if you if you ask me who I am as a person, all those pieces of those different characters become. is is actually me. Hmm. So it's not that I influence them, they influence me more than uh more than what what they should actually. But yeah, 100%. Gazi was a very very interesting film to put together. It was uh, it was the first submarine movie. And uh it was so hard to convince people for me to make that film. Uh hmm. because it is in Telugu at that point there was uh, there was no there was action but nobody fights anybody mm-hmm. uh there's no songs in the movie there was no girl in the movie before and then uh we had we wrote a uh, role and tapsi played was kind enough to play a special appearance so i there was a girl on a poster and, <laughs> and we could make it feel like a commercial film but uh, but yeah that that was really fun that was really fun to put together you get i i read somewhere like you were you shot for 18 days under water you miss sunlight what was that story about so that film was actually pretty crazy to shoot because it was all inside of a submarine hmm. right? and uh, they built about three compartments of a submarine no four compartments of a submarine one that was immersed in a swimming pool uh, so it's it's only few places where you have that deep end pool where you can go like 12 feet 14 feet under the older pools so they built an entire submarine that could 
immerse inside of that pool and get out hmm. so all of the days of the shooting were inside of those places and it was built under a uh, an under construction apartment building because the oh. the swimming pool was next to it okay so they leased the parking lot hmm. and built the submarines there oh <laughs> was, was it challenging for you underwater or like it's just no it's fun same. man it's it's a it's lot fun. of it's a lot of fun you love water yeah i like water it's it's a lot of fun are you are you scared of anything like let's say water is one of the biggest i used to be scared of heights still i started doing action films and then after that <laughs> it just went away i used to be when i was a kid i used to really be scared of heights then after that in stunt school in seattle and then they just kept dropping you from this is 100 feet drop this is 90 feet drop this is 40 feet drop and, and then life was fun <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so what do you what 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 do you think scare you about heights like that you'll fall or like just this idea know. of looking i don't know first i i have a eyesight problem so i can't see really well So once hmm. it's once it's really far there's a sense of you don't know what's going on <laughs> unpredictability right? yeah, yeah. like so, okay what's going on yeah so that's what it probably is you're talking about eyesight something that i was blown away to know, know about you right. okay that was your physical transformations right you you had an eyesight problem okay i think the right eye mm-hmm. then in 2020 you faced the kidney failure yeah right where 30% it was fatal 70% doctors yeah. said that you can have a hemorrhage it's a pretty trippy time it's it was yeah. like complicated <laughs> yeah. right but you like you still had one of the best bodies in the country like you just you gotten like pretty bulled yoked in fact right now like dude like you look your way taller than <laughs> what i imagined you to be yeah i'm the guy like i got i got scared like for the moment i was like okay this this guy is like tall Like should I, would I be able to like talk to him in like at the same level? <laughs> no, it's fine, man. We're sitting. We're good. No, but uh, yeah, I got a bunch of problems like that. But uh, I'll tell you what happened. There was a friend of mine who was working in visual effects at that point. Hmm. He so he was there when my eye surgery was done, and he came, so I shouldn't laugh at that point, right? Because everything is like it's all fixed oh. and should, so you couldn't laugh. You shouldn't. I mean, you should just have calmer expressions and. that night should pass so this guy came to see me and he's like dude you look like the terminator <laughs> and i was like wow <laughs> that's probably true <laughs> and i think everything that i that i had okay it was it was uh, it was hard at the time that it happened but i think overcoming that is 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 fun because it makes you another person and what doesn't kill you makes you strong beast <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's where i think all the energy comes from nice so do, do you regret it do you feel bad about it have you ever thought of it like maybe yeah. i'm not equal as equal as other people i have to work harder because of few no, physical dude. challenges no dude, i never thought that never never i don't know i think it was i was like I'm, i can do this <laughs> never had no not really You never even thought about it for a second, like maybe now. Yeah, when when my the eye time never because okay. I guess I was young and I was just like yeah. I can How do. old were you when you when you I was in eleventh uh, grade. Okay. So it was like you can still rule the world uh, kind of energy, right? Yeah. It's like at it, school, my friend told me I looked at the Terminator, so <laughs> I think life was fine. So you're But, just making it sound cool, like it's no, no. I'm when sure I was it was when I was young, it was actually cool. I'll t- I'll, t- I'll tell you why because. So I had a problem called keratoconus. Okay. Uh so what happened is uh, your eye from the side looks spherical like this, mine became conical. Okay. And what they had to do is they had to cut this top off, hmm. replace it with a donor eye. So this is the process. But months before when that surgery was going to happen and when they had to decide. So I had a little scar inside of my eye, the right eye. So okay. which means it's like tearing the cornea in some ways. That looked so cool. <laughs> and uh, so I used to show off to everybody in school and stuff like that. So, so wow. that time it was that. But uh, the second round onwards, the the kidney time, that was a hard one. Hmm. Uh, that was a hard one because a I was diagnosed with blood pressure and uh, like extreme, and hmm. and after that I had my organs gone off, kidneys gone off. Now for me it was like I didn't know what I. W- what i should do next i was like should i just be at the desk for some time just not go to shoot yeah. uh 
so you, i didn't know which career i should follow the problem is you have many interests and you have many careers yeah and uh, see so there was a bunch of films that were built for a big guy at that point and then i i i lost like i think about 40 kilos or something before surgery because i had to yeah uh, eat like no salt for a year and rubbish like that so at that point was too much thinking of okay what am i going to do in life i'm saying should i act in films should i not act in films and uh, so my my manager at that point i think uh, uh vijay who is hmm. who's the head of collector he said like, you just have to get back to work like just do something so i didn't want to play main lead because i felt like listen i need it's a lot of energy to do that it's a lot more responsibility hmm. so I, i i did films where i was a part of a story so okay. whether it was bhimla nayak in telugu with mr pavan kalyan uh, virat parvan that i did is a is actually a film about sai pallavi the girl hmm. so i'm not the story is not on me the story is on someone else so i was produce part producing some so that became an easier way to get into it and then now i can lift i can slowly get, again again yeah again. get back to whatever i want i'm glad you took the villain route dude <laughs> <laughs> like bahubali was i mean i'm sure like that was by far the in fact one of the rare films where people fall in love with villain more than they fall in love with mm-hmm. like the actor or the hero like the main main protagonist that just shows how you are as a person <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> <coughs> no but yeah but i i love playing the bad guy man uh like there's a certain like for a for the hero of a film or the protagonist there's a certain beat you need to take you need to do the right things you need to be a good guy you need to fall in love with the correct way uh, this rhythm yeah. is there but the minute i played bad it was just mad energy till till the end right and i said wow this is that was a lot of fun playing like it is it is you know and playing fact, a villain for rajmouli was built the greatest villain i think is was it's crazy is amazing right and you know i tell you fun fact my new startup name is behind a villain like yeah. it is named after a villain so just because i was not getting a name and i was like okay i love villains hero ke naam sab rakhte hain i want to put it a villain it's mm. mojo jojo is like a, i was a kid when i was doing uh-huh. this but yeah like that's nice. so probably you yeah. what you said like you see yourself as that yeah, yeah. see there you go so i was asking like do you feel that you want to be really like relevant and like do something which stays very very long like do you think about legacy shall increasing your shelf life because as an artist the shelf life is super low for a lot of people like you do some projects and then you're forgotten so do do you constantly think about it that you want to be remembered for long i have a very strange approach to these things uh when i was about 30 years old hmm. uh about maybe 32 33 years old i was i started working and running a company that was about 50 years old okay and uh, then i invested in another company that was another 50 or 60 years old uh one being suresh productions which is my parent company and uh, the other is amar chitrakatha hmm and to me those legacies were so big and the idea of permanency like the fact that you can do something and it can stay forever right is always been the agenda of anything that i put together whether mm-hmm. it's a film whether it's a show whether it's a product whether it's a company whatever it is it's the idea of permanency it's a, it's a hard idea to fight with yeah uh but i like that <laughs> because i feel like life is life is long and there's Uh, you like the idea of yeah, i like the idea of permanency and and the fact that you're able to hold history hold values for so long along with a lot of people hmm. i think that's uh, that's very rare but i think that's important so do you do you think about like one day let's say in 2030 or 2040 or 2050 rana is equals to this what does rana look like or like an ideal branding like the, i'll just give an example the way we think about sharukh khan today right it has become synonym for love do you think that you want to be synonymized with something or what's the like how do you want to be remembered have you ever thought of it no i really didn't think of how i want to be remembered but uh, everything that i do i'd like to look back at it and say wow this is fun <laughs> so uh, if you uh, whether it's my filmography of films uh, everything will be different from one another hmm. whether it's the work that i do apart from films all of that still has to be uh fun fun and 
it needs to do something to people mm. so i'm saying the why is very important for me why am i doing this film why am i building this business why so to me i have to be able to convince myself well <laughs> okay it. okay and why so let's just ask you have so many interests i want to know the why behind like two three four things to understand you better sure. okay right. and you recent you recently acquired amar chitrakatha right that's like the legacy no, i invested in it. oh you invested I, I didn't in acquire it. Okay. sorry it's, sorry no. So you invested in it, yes. and uh, that's like a legacy old business. Yes. What were you thinking? Like, would you turn around it? Because it's it it was a dying business at one point. Yeah. Uh, see, one is storytelling never dies. Uh, whether and especially in a country like India, mm-hmm. the stories that are told to us today are things that orally came for like five thousand, ten thousand, or more years, right? And in in cinema in the black and white era a lot of that had been captured hmm. where people made stories on mythology pe- people made stories on folklore there was a lot of indian values that were instilled in those stories that had but had scale and had, had great entertainment hmm. but in the in the modern era we didn't know really how to get these films together till bahubali really happened yeah. so then we knew that okay now we can tell stories at scale uh and what is wonderful about it is we're not bound by industries if we tell those stories uh a story of india becomes a story of india it's uh a king in india is a king for everybody uh a warrior in india is a warrior for everybody D- doesn't matter which part of the land he comes from yeah and to me i had said i said how do we be able to build this in scale and mm-hmm. to me amar chitrakatha was the only place that held all these stories to a captive audience and and I can speak for many people my age slightly younger and older older definitely a lot more who the english speaking india today understands indian mythology because of amar chitrakatha mostly yeah right and they owned a period of time uh through comic books when uncle pai built that hmm. uh, out so i think today with film with the fact that we are able to do large scale cinema and entertain them at the same time instill values of what india really is and i think that's what amar chitrakatha is so when you invest in something like this as a business mm-hmm. okay i get the why that you want to bring those stories out so you invest in them and value them on the basis of the story and how big that story can become or do you value on the management or do you value on the potential from their like potential of the all the stakeholders to recreate those stories like what do you value in terms of purely in the business sense is like the access to the old stories which were already big see one okay it's a multiple question set yeah each time you're looking not for the same thing hmm. each time you're looking for different things okay uh i'm not a serial investor i'm not a, a venture capital guy or none of those things uh i'm a storyteller and i need to find businesses or technologies you know in order to tell stories and films better <coughs> so the approach will be uh, very very different and but what you said first is actually the first right thing where am i able to build a story forever with this company mm-hmm. that's to me the most important uh, part of it after that is the people right yeah. it's how many people can buy into this vision now amar chitrakatha is a vision that I know many people will buy into whether it's yeah. storytellers because of the influence that it had whether it's on filmmakers today whether it's on historians whether it's on artists whatever that is so that relevance will always stay so I know it's a place that I can bring great people together hmm okay so, so that's that's but i i beg to differ when you said like i'm not a i'm not an investor i'm not a, I'm <laughs> I, like, i became one <laughs> yeah, of, became, out of need like I was, i was doing research on you in fact before we even finalized that we want to do this and we were trying to convince you i went out to do like lot of research and i found out that you are not just an actor like you have a vfx studio you have talent management you are into sports you own a sports franchise and then you are an investor as well at with the vc company right like you are you are a partner i think at the vc yeah. company yeah. anthill yeah. right and then you have a production house like you have multiple things yeah so coming to you talked about the family dynamics okay 
what was your experience growing up with them did you ever face that the creative process of two generations were not matching did you ever like had fights because the way we progress or the way we grow or the kind of content we consume is very different than the generations older right in fact there are certain points where like there are certain things my my dad doesn't understand mm. and i have to spend like weeks with him to just give him the central idea of okay this is so were your were your parents progressive and acceptable of the ideas which you had or you had some troubles see one is that my family believes in a very independent spirit of living right it's my granddad never forced my dad to do a certain thing my dad never forced me to do anything everybody became individuals of who they are and what they are best at uh but yeah i mean there will be many times we won't agree on the same thing uh whether it's in the creative process whether it's in a business process there's many things that have changed over time but the beauty is because they are entrepreneurs themselves they are consistently understand that change is constant uh their learning process is extremely fast so it's it's pretty amazing how what they le- didn't know a year ago the way they adapt to it because they want to be so relevant and so current in what they do uh especially my dad i think it just blows my mind it's like how do you know this man uh and and it also helps that my dad then is much more educated than i am uh okay. he's a mechanical engineer from meshing and anapa sweet and uh, i'm a guy who discontinued bcom you know, <laughs> a college in hyderabad <laughs> 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 so just his academic <laughs> brilliance gets him to learn <laughs> no more <laughs> more than i do still <laughs> why did you drop out why did you do that bro i don't know man i couldn't study when i was young i don't know something just mm. didn't work for me no yeah i was i was i was pretty terrible in was it because you got to know your strengths early on that i'm good at let's say vfx or building businesses no, or something like that like, not like i knew that i just knew i this i couldn't do <laughs> like it was it was strange like in school i was i was extremely good with languages i was good with english i was good with telugu i was i loved history uh then i watched like every movie that ever released in every language i think at that point in hyderabad and i i used to have a lot of interests when i was younger hmm. but math and science and all of that just didn't land just, just didn't land so interesting because i have a similar thing because i dropped out of college as well and and it was bbs so bcom bbs kind of same thing yeah. and the but like and my reason was the same because i found out that i want to pursue speaking for the rest of my life so i joined un at that time and i represented india oh, there that's amazing so but i did it because i thought like there's a backup for you like did you know that so no so i'll tell you when i took the choice of leaving college hmm. was there was this uh, so i used to keep i i'm born in chennai so uh, mm-hmm. and i used to keep going back there even after i moved to hyderabad so there there was a inst- a photography institute mm-hmm. it's called the institute of imaging technology okay now they had a program for uh, photography which was broken down and you didn't have to pass college or you didn't, didn't need a degree really okay. uh, to be in that and it's it's mostly professionals or semi professionals that come there and train I was like okay listen if I can figure out a way to get into this it's education it's stuff that I like and uh, that'll be an interesting way to convince my parents that listen I'm not going to do this what I'm going to do this. <laughs> my mom flipped when I was going to study photography she's like what are you going to do take marriage photos like this that she just <laughs> went mad uh but my dad somewhere i think caught it and said okay this guy he's not studying anyways uh, so and, it's better that he does something <laughs> yeah, else yeah and then that changed my life completely man when mm. i went to chennai the fun part was i was i was like i think what what, what how old are you in become like 20 yeah like yeah. 1920 1920 or something yeah maybe in like 19 or something and uh, the next guy in class was about 20 years older than me or 15 years older than i was in the so, photography yeah, yeah so it was it was like professionals that were learning photography so there was i remember there was a a reporter from bbc who was training himself to be a photographer so it's another upskill for him so mm. it was all people like that uh and so i got to hang out with a different group altogether 
then what i did was so the first program i did was industrial photography hmm. the second i continued doing another program there which was photo lab management okay so uh, they teach you how to manage photo studios so pro- and, and at film at that point so that's something nice. that i understood well and uh, then we had a film laboratory in hyderabad so it also made sense to my dad that these guys learning something that he might be of use to later so <laughs> that that's where i moved out but you ever thought just asking from because i also think about this a lot do you ever get this feeling like this feeling that maybe you would have gone to college and had fun not for the part of studying because when i see like co- like movies like high school musical or uh-huh. like like you know like the american college movies like mm-hmm. the ideal american dream movies i feel like shit man i this is one thing i missed in my life i never had a college life ah uh-huh. because you don't have friends you don't go partying a lot like you know thing is i so did i did all of that without college <laughs> 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 i partied a hell of a lot uh and and what happens is when when you start making money when you're like 23 24 years old mm. and uh it's it's money that it's not like i'm I, and i was lucky enough i didn't have to look after my parents or anything they're well sorted so it was all my money mm. and your lifestyle becomes really extravagant uh so i think all of that college stuff happened for me in a different manner and sometimes when i know i can't get there why worry about it <laughs> but during my business years is when i really wish that i just understood or studied a little more mm. so i just keep uh, now doing management development programs i went like two once or twice to iim i did one in isb oh nice yeah, otherwise it's just hard man everybody else is so much more educated uh in in that realm uh and i'm a storyteller for me to kind Trans- of getting get in there business. was a lot of learning we'll we'll get to business part okay like that's mm-hmm. the exciting part i have just like one two last questions on mm-hmm. the creative and the personal life part right so <coughs> you said when you're 22 23 or 24 like under 25 when you make money mm-hmm. and it's your money and you mm-hmm. don't have any responsibility mm-hmm. you get extravagant with your lifestyle mm-hmm. okay tell me one thing that you feel that i should have not spent on and one thing that you feel like thank god i spent on this see it's like this when like i think i'm from a little different age than what today's 21 year old is okay and i think today's generation is so much smarter than what i was the fact that they understand investing so well they understand growing capital so well <coughs> sorry the fact that to me i didn't i wasn't smart enough to do that at that point uh that's something i feel bad about that you you think that you just you should have started investing at the age of 21 yeah i think i should have because it's it's as as much fun you understand a lot more you uh i'll tell you a fun fun thing that i really enjoyed so after i came back uh from the hospital in america so i was like okay now i was coming back i wasn't shooting for a while i was still on desk and i started investing in in uh i started looking at investing in alcohol brands okay and i invested in one uh, called salute which is a gin and tonic company and i was just happy i could now find a way to make money off alcohol <laughs> <laughs> instead of spending yeah, money so i was like okay now let me take this like this okay my 20s to my 30s is blew up on a bunch of things let's mm-hmm. see if i can make money back in the things that i blew up so it's nice that was the direction i took <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a good way to recoup your money back years later once yeah. you make <laughs> i'm going to think about all the things i've spent money on mm. so it just feels like you didn't lose after a point you're like okay you enjoyed it but then you're like damn i could have invested in the stock and uh, it could have become something else so, and what do you what do you feel that thank god i spent on this i regret nothing man i regret nothing i mean the that madness that i had gave me an exposure to a world that very very few people have the opportunity of seeing and i think everything that i do today is because of the fact that i was exploring what, what do you mean by exploring I'll give me one ex- one story like something that you explored and you feel like damn thank god i, I spent on this particular experience is there anything special? see i'm saying whether it's theme parks whether it's music festivals everything across shows you a culture and a lifestyle that uh you want to 100% build or be part in some ways right 
and i think all anything that was experiential uh is is definitely worth spending on when you're when you're young mm. it doesn't matter if it's really expensive if you can afford it just go and do it because that's going to change your life forever oh 100% i damn i believe in it in this so much because music festivals have shaped me the kind of person i it made me talk to so many people gave me confidence made me a better conversation like just yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah it just goes on i mean it's the fact that there's thousands and thousands of people that are just free of energy yeah it doesn't matter how much money you got doesn't matter what you look like doesn't matter what clothes you're wearing you're just all together with music and energy i think that's that changes you as a person for sure so which which one is your music, favorite music festival my favorite is commercial sell but tomorrow land <laughs> i loved it when i went there nice have you been to edc electric daisy carnival las vegas no no i have not yet no i have like, no i've been to ultra in miami ultra yeah, yeah. so and all started with sunburn and goa though <laughs> <laughs> the many sunburns in goa same same thing you learn i've not been to tomorrowland yet but uh, like i've been to untold festival yeah. in romania that's oh nice like that's that's what they say like huh that's like similar to tomorrowland the same lineup everything same just like the awesome. so it's great so people say that edc is better than tomorrowland so you better check out next time all right no that's the edc it is <laughs> yeah so because i like so, more like but, but the good thing is i the fact that i did it then and uh, now after see like I, i'll tell you why like we spoke about my health thing a little while ago mm-hmm. if that didn't happen i would have been a debauched guy even now <laughs> so it's i'm happy that there was a phase in my life that i did an extreme yeah and now you're not allowed to do it so you're like wow what okay. a clean guy you are <laughs> and it's a clean guy energy huh. uh like there's one thing that i told a friend of mine when uh, i stayed in the us after surgery Every time I used to go to the US earlier I used to spend so much money and it used to cost a lot. I was like wow if you don't party if you don't drink if you don't do all of this stuff it's it's so simple living. I said uh, I love this. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm enjoying a different high now. Nice. Nice. So did you <coughs> did you meet your partner in festivals or like something no, like that? How did that no, happen? No. Uh in the pandemic actually. in the band or oh, tell yeah. me about the story tell me about the, your your little love story uh, uh my how do i put this so like i've always known her all my life i've known mika uh, because she was my sister's friend we known each other nice. but we were never friends or one and i guess the pandemic we connected we started talking and we were like okay this works <laughs> and that's it that's how simple and e- simple and easy it was there was no like there was no like fairy tale it's movie fa- kind of story see i'm saying it's it's fairy tale when there's an energy that comes together no mm. i mean that's that's more fairy tale than anything for me what what was it do, do you have that striking button like like was that yeah i'm an extreme instinct type guy vibe like, yeah. vibe match yeah, and yeah, then yeah yeah and then i'm saying life is a journey you got to figure it out we, there'll be good things there'll be bad things but uh if you want to do it together we can do it together nice is there something which you absolutely love about her like i mean there obviously there oh, like so many yeah, things but she what is i just feel she is the the balance of everything right like only after i got married i realized how whack my life was i was like shit this is how i live <laughs> so i think if not for her there was there wouldn't be a balance of uh, anything in here so you are an extremist yeah yeah i am an extremist i am uh it's that that boho spirit that i have i can just mm. be everywhere mm. i don't i need something to hold me and say here this is home so mm, I, so yes so there was an article i was reading from i asked this question specifically so there was an article i was reading from georgia tech mm. so they say if you want to know about a person find out what their partner what do they like about their partner mm. and that will tell you a lot about the the person because if you like like the balance of your mm. of your partner a lot mm. that means you are an extremist because mm. that's what you feel like she has over it so yeah that's probably right what you read <laughs> that's right yeah you know there's and then they this it's so such an easy thing they ask they said they don't ask you anything they just say are you a boat or an anchor mm. just that's a question for you just think about it. like there's boat, no logic to I'm it like, are you a boat or, or an anchor? anchor i think i'm a boat man See there you go. Yeah. So that's what the article said yeah, like I, you know what 
when you asked that question i wanted to be the anchor <laughs> i was like no but i'm not <laughs> so everyone close to you around you uh, would be an anchor possible probably because, because you're the one you're the wild probably. one you're the explorer you want to go out probably. and the anchor holds you still together for sure for sure right and if you were the anchor everyone around you would be the boat interesting So that to me, that article is so fascinating. S- send it, send it to me. Oh, you already read? Like yeah. you liked it? Yeah. Uh, perfect. Okay. Talking about <coughs> something you said earlier, I love that. You said you want to make more money than your dad. Mm. Like that's one of my whys. Mm. Like for real, I want to do that. And and the competition is only in my head. Yeah. My dad too wants me to make more money than him. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, exactly. It's. Uh, but I think that's the drive. No, it's. Uh, uh-huh. It's fun. Energy, and it's it's awesome that we have. dads who we can look up to and yeah so here you go this is what you want to get yeah absolutely so tell me what out of like 100 things which you do do you feel has the potential to help you make way more money than anything else is it the studio is it the uh, comic producer like amar chitrakata is it the vc firm it is the sports management the hyderabad fc or no to me uh, just to me amar, uh, amar chitrakata and the studio that we'll put together with it i think is it will probably be the biggest dream that can be achieved do you think that that has the potential to become like a unicorn like a billion dollar company see i'll tell you i heard this somewhere and i don't know who said it but uh, what's a unicorn what's a unicorn something that's valued And no, it's thousand eight thousand crores. No, it's a mythical creature that you do not see. Right. Uh, today there is a sense of business where to make one rupee you spend about five hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and those are the bigger businesses today, right? Uh, which will, which are great for some people. They change the way of life. They've built some great businesses, but I don't value myself in that direction at all. To me. can this company be relevant for the next 100 years whether we are there or not that becomes valuable for me that's extreme value like look at disney as a company hmm walt disney is gone a long time ago but today it's the most relevant brand that will cut across every segment right and i think that's that's value to be built so to hmm. me i'm i'm going to bet on fewer horses what i'll try to make each one last interesting it's i have two points one a contradictory to what you said and mm. second in the alignment of what you mm. want to say first is i think every business gets built by spending in the beginning mm. way more than they earn like look at the infrastructure look mm. at the movie business like it's just you get money from different sources put it in one in a hope that one day it will give me more than what i'm spending today right now it's getting gl- it's crazy the multiples are crazy but this is how every business gets built see but money is not the first thing that you require in business if you're building an entertainment business if you're building a storytelling company if you're building a film company you need to have stories to tell yeah and that happen sitting and writing and that costs nothing it's your mind it's your energy so there's there's many businesses that require very little or no capital it requires the ability of thinking and creating a service or a product that can work in after a certain scale then it's then see i'm saying the business should drive the finances the finance shouldn't drive the business and everyday nice. activity so i think that's sustainable that's sustainable that's consistently building value that can create employment that you can hold see we're a company that's that's now about 4 350 400 across different partnerships in group companies we didn't have to fire anybody during the pandemic we didn't have to do anything why because we had enough reserves to hold this company for x number of years right and that only gets built if you're if you're building a successful business if i'm trying to raise then again i'll have to cut half of them fire half the company i mean you see that layoffs in every industry right and every industry that that's taken to extreme scale mm-hmm. without the business that's governing it Yeah. So then, what happens? You you're you're building great employment business. You give jobs to ten thousand people. You fire five thousand of them. <laughs> After that, then what's what's the fun in that? No, I like I like that point where you said 
the business should drive the finance not yeah, the finance not the other way around that's it's interesting what do you value the most in business is it customer obsession is it employee obsession is it idea or like the i give you examples of all three steve jobs was product oriented he didn't mm-hmm. care about anything else mm-hmm. he was like obsessed jeff bezos is customer obsessive like he didn't care about himself and richard branson the virgin atlantic guy he's obsessed with his employees he feels like if if i make the best place or give best things to my employees they'll build the business see i think i'm in a world where it's a combination of things because the jobs that i do are extremely collaborative jobs yeah and to me the creators and the people that are creating it become the most important people first because without them there's nothing uh, there is no customer there is nothing without the idea of artists and writers and technicians coming together i think that's that's for me the first key of everything mm-hmm. uh then it becomes the audience that we're trying to satisfy yeah uh we're trying to touch an emotional chord by telling a story why in in a process we're trying to give you information we're trying to give you values we're trying to entertain you so i think it's a combination of things that it, that would drive me just being obsessed with one i don't know if that will drive i don't know if i'm in that position right now but you could choose, choose one and, and i can just be so it's like this like me if i can just continue just acting non stop in films i'll make more money than most of the businesses because mm-hmm. it costs it doesn't cost me yeah. i don't have to raise money to run this show yeah if i shoot for 300 days i will make more money than a bunch of businesses that i'm running right now but that's just me alone i doesn't build value it doesn't it's it's value for me mm-hmm. but i'm not able to distribute that value across people oh interesting i want to know what's the percentage you uh, let's say give me let's say if you if you make 100 bucks mm mm-hmm. 50 does it come from acting 30 does it come from acting like what is like what's oh, the breakage oh man this it's there's every year changes dude this year tell me this year if if uh, there's any this year any pattern you've recognized the acting has become lesser because i've i'm shooting lesser stuff okay i've just been doing one show with netflix for mm-hmm. the last year and a half uh, so that would be like 10% of your 20 30% of that i'd give it a 30% to me being the artist okay 30 to 40% and the rest is my businesses the rest is your businesses yeah oh no that's a that's a great mix for a person who's artist first i'll tell you why it also happened because of the pandemic because i was scared i couldn't be an artist anymore like there was a time where i genuinely thought that it will be very difficult for me to get up and shoot hmm. and uh, i after this uh, after the kidney transplant it will become a very difficult process to do action all those in every script that i was going to i was like dude i can't do this like mm. it was that came first so life went into just building businesses and making sure that nice everything else is so will, post will pandemic rana is way different than the that, yeah yeah for sure man for sure because it teaches too many things i mean i and it's funny that all of this came together I just felt like I was in the pandemic a little before everybody because I was in hospital for mm. a while. I was like, okay, now everyone's getting the same similar problem. It's okay, I can run this. <laughs> nice. And, and how do you spend your money? How do I spend my money? Just like, investing in fun new things, man. That's it. Like that's out my, of hundred percent, you. Yeah, I get broke doing that most times. Damn. See, because what happens is investing is money in value. Unless you sell it, it's not. It's yeah. not money that you have. So. uh it ha- it happened to me a bunch of times i i want to know more <laughs> so i mean it's like this right see you're excited about uh a new idea a that... new idea or a new tech that's built uh now you feel like that's going to change the world in the next 5 or 7 years now how do you cough up money for that now i got i i act in films i do endorsements i do some live stuff uh I can't pull out from other businesses because they're growing businesses. They're profitable, but they're profitable for themselves. Mm. Uh, it's those part. It's a different eco- economy uh, or, or, or an ecosystem that's getting this money in the pool. So then it goes into me just going nonstop and shooting stuff, and I'm like, here you go. This will take care of. <laughs> is is there so, something that you that you keep spending on or investing on, and you feel like this will one day be my game? a lot in media tech 
is where my investments have gone uh, where whether it is in content creation whether it's acquiring ip okay whether it's in uh, blockchain syndication technologies that can either get my business done better mm. or make my filmmaking better okay so these are these are businesses that i'm consistently investing in because it's also a, a very small pool in the country that you have this from right uh, there have been times that we've invested in companies and put those t- like two companies together because because you need a lot of uh, resource pool. resource pool to build that see unlike the west where the it sector and the entertainment sector just go in together as one here everyone's really different right yeah. the the it in that city doesn't talk to the entertainment world in that city it's just strange like that so for me it's building those bridges are quite important for a long lasting business so you want to build that infrastructure of media tech together yeah yeah that's interesting thought look what see i'm saying that's how the, the rest <laughs> of the world got to scale right hmm is um, no entertainment company in india is really a, a strong tech company yeah right now no. but look at any entertainment company in the west they will have technology that that puts everybody to shame here hmm so that's uh, so how do we build that it's not if you want to go and work with the people in the west they're all companies that are at large scales they are in some form unicorns like you said themselves and it's hard for us to now try to catch that bandwagon yeah. so it's either we build it from scratch we find founders together so i mean that that takes up a lot of my money so there was a, these deals there so. was a rumor okay, a rumor i don't know is true there's a company called icons yeah and jeff bezos and bill gates have invested in it no i mean they've invested in a fund called woodstock and that woodstock fund invested oh okay yeah. <laughs> okay i was like like that's mad yeah, it's woodstock like, the fund that they're also part of. okay so as an angel you were able to s- find a deal which was like super hot take for the ogs of the world as well how do you find these people how do you find these deals because so my first deal flow uh, was is through antel mm-hmm. antel is uh, antel studio is a company that we built along with antel ventures that's been uh, around in across the verticals uh, for a while now so mm-hmm. we tried to concentrate and start building a media tech okay. accelerator uh, media tech then everything that entertainment can support uh whether it's with talent whether it's with content whether it's whatever that is so media tech came first and then we moved into consumer brand and all of them coming just as a natural fit mm-hmm. interesting okay you 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 talked about something walt disney okay and it's i have a i'm a big believer the examples you take are the examples you aspire right, right. so yeah. do you think that Walt Disney is something that you want to do like the Disney world is something you want to do with Amar Chitrakata it's to me Amar Chitrakata has a certain one leg bigger right see what is what are disney and the characters they are made of hmm. they are fictional characters there are some from public domain uh but here the characters in Amar Chitrakata are gods they worship their temples uh they are loved and revered in a much much different manner so i just feel as a as a business yes it's a, a disney would be a great example for what we're trying to do together do with it but i think india will build you something else out it it just won't be this what would what would india build you or like see because the storytelling just outdates everything yeah everything that mankind knows these stories outdate and if they could last the test of time till now and they they will continue to last because now there is more and more relevance to knowing these stories to being hmm. understood <coughs> the whether it's the narrative of the country whether it's narrative of the people they want to know who they are they want to know their localness they want to know their mythologies they want to know their gods and this is a very different way it's not mickey mouse or donald duck right so it's a i think india will and this mythology has somewhere disconnected from the southeast asian world you now if you go to thailand uh, you will see the influence that that mythology the hindu mythology had at that point uh, if you go to cambodia any of these places 
but today we don't know what that bridge was yeah just because nobody sat and told that history but i'm saying the gods went <laughs> how did yeah. those stories go what is it so i think all of that has a it's there's a certain global appeal to these stories way beyond being indian hmm see because the india then was a very different india right yeah yeah you know there was a there's a game theory around this mm. that all the marvel characters mm. are inspired by mythology i mean there's clearly there's thor yeah yeah but i'm saying anybody writing any superhero will be inspired by mythology there's no other way that you will write it uh right and because it's it's telling believable things in an unbelievable manner and those are stories that you want to hear and they've been they've been coming for centuries now and mm. anybody who is writing in that direction if they're not inspired by mythology it's stupid so so wherever it is i'm saying whether it's a marvel character whether it's a character of a, a regular hero today everything will have a reference of mythology somewhere or the other true because and these stories have already been told we're just polishing them and telling them in another way in a That's different it. way so do you see do you see building superhero movies stuff like that for sure for sure man for sure for sure what excites you the most like what kind of superhero excites you the most what kind of superhero or like which is your favorite superhero movie like just let's just put it that's my bad just my so it's strange like i like thanos in the avengers <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Balal Dev 101. <laughs> he, he, so I mean, and I dub for him in Telugu. So uh, yeah, it, no, it, no, it no. was pretty amazing actually. Uh what is what's my favorite? I think the first Iron Man would be my favorite. Hmm. Uh Black Panther after. Oh nice. Uh But beating all of this would be the Dark Knight. For sure. Like it will just blow these guys out. Yeah, and so the Dark Knight is is probably the top superhero film that that I've enjoyed watching okay, multiple I have, times. I have an interesting question on this because again this is like a you ask people what are the superheroes and it tells a lot about the personality. Mm-hmm. Okay. What what would you choose between three? Power, fame, money. Between power, fame, money. <sighs> power if I have to choose between power, fame and money. money only maybe <laughs> <laughs> why <laughs> just logical no hmm it's just a logical step to do things well, don't you feel like if you have power you can make money anyway or like power overrules money sometimes no i mean it's different right i mean what, what do you want to insert i'm not a guy who wants to insert power uh, i can influence by the good things that i do anyways and hmm. the businesses that i run will make money so i think that's an easier one to do and to me the job that i have will get me famous and it'll get yeah. going so interesting because you chose iron man and dark knight yeah. both of them are like super rich people <laughs> 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 okay maybe i guess right huh. the, the villain theory works here as well <laughs> like the one you choose is No okay. subconsciously you I wanted. Told, I told you I'm a bunch of characters that I played. Fair, fair, fair. Mm-hmm. Okay, they're coming to the movie parts. Okay, I love, I love parallel. And you said India is evolving mm-hmm. and stories outdate everything. Mm-hmm. Right now, there's a rage that South Indian movies are getting accepted at yeah. a larger scale yeah. than the the mainstream Bollywood media. Yeah. Right? Why do you feel it's the reason? Like, why South Indian movies are now like? It's just that. Uh, going crazy just that nobody paid attention to it till now that's it they were always there <laughs> okay and just that there is now information has broken the internet has broken uh television first did that first set of buying content from the south uh where south india i guess all of the industries are much more connected to indian roots and indian ethos in in their storytelling uh whereas uh the bombay industry or mumbai industry was there was a certain india one type of uh, approach where yeah. there was a certain what was extremely modern what was new what was culture uh, modern culture that that adaptation is very very good uh, like 
you will see many yeah. like you'll never see a Kapoor and Sons kind of film happening in Telugu. It's 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 because it's culture that very few people understand. Mm. So, uh, so that you got an overload of that, I guess, in some ways, and people always want variety. Yeah, and and now I think it's the time where we all actually understand India better than what we used to. Yeah, uh, there is. So I have I have a, I have a bunch of friends uh, who live in South Bombay. <laughs> they're pretty amazing. They uh, so they don't only watch Hindi films. Uh, they watch like French movies and like some extreme offbeat stuff. Yeah. They started watching Malayalam films after the pandemic. Mm. So I was like, okay, wow. Now I'm saying that's cutting culture in a different manner because it's still slice of life. It's still the way that probably French cinema is made or mm. other cinema that these people enjoy, but they're ex- enjoying it because it's a leaf of India. Yeah, and that's cin- and art always connects. Yeah. See, it's politics that will divide you by state. You're from this state. You're from this state. But art always will bring you together. So I think cinema has been a great tool in uniting us. And do you feel also the reason is Bollywood was a lot about aspiration, and like the South Indian movies were a lot about relatability and authenticity. You're like, it had less aspirational value, more connecting value. It's like it. You see that there was an immediate win there. Like. If see, I want to be see, the I'm we, ideal, I could be that. I don't know. See, I'm saying you can't categorize films like that because see, one there are in India there are about two thousand film nets every year. Hmm. There are two thousand films, so the plot, stories, and what defines each of them is very, very different. Uh, you will, you and see, and what is India? It's unity and diversity, correct? Now, that's what cinema is. It's extremely diverse. and it constantly needs to be that hmm. for people to be engaged so that's the reflection of who you are film is like a mirror to society in some ways like if the films in bombay aren't working it's it's also the reflection of what the society is thinking and being about right it's that's about it. true you know i also feel like this i was just having a conversation with one of my friends about this that what you said was right yeah. that the movies were all, always there mm. nobody just paid attention yeah, like now yeah, people are yeah. i think people paid a lot of attention but they were getting all of that on set max and stuff like i remember watching yeah. growing up watching nagarjuna like yeah. the mask yeah. the mask right yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. movie the yeah. one man army ah. like in hindi dub you yeah, have you love hindi dub yeah. yeah dawn number 1 <laughs> surya or all of that right like that was so we all used to watch that and we used to love that <laughs> Now, just that that that's happening on big screen as on a, well. Yes, that's so because we're always getting that on TV. Yeah, so it's I mean it had one audience that it captured. Now it just crossed over and. Is that like Bahu Bali played like an important role in that? I mean, see, there was all like you said, there was always things on set max and others that you were watching Star Gold and constant dubs. Hmm. I think so. There was a certain acceptance, and Bahu Bali just came on top of all of that and just made it normal. Hmm. see it uh, it became that first indian film moment right and the fact that if entire india wakes up to watch a film this is what happens that moment happened for the first time hmm. uh so i think it 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 played a lot in terms of bringing this together the fact that post that they, there was a kgf there were kantara there were there are many more films that are now being accepted uh, in an with an india wide audience there's triple r that's globally accepted yeah. so you will see more and more of this cinema happening so tell me like three <coughs> things which you feel bollywood should learn from south indian movies so that it's a very hard way it's filmmaker to filmmaker it's artist to artist it's story to story it's hard to say what one needs to learn from the other uh but let's just think like tell me one thing which you feel bollywood has missing and tell me one thing which you feel south indian movies should learn from bollywood Like let's play both the roles. See, there is a certain industrialization that the Bollywood industry had created, hmm. uh, which in the south is is slowly happening now, where the fact that they were exposed to a to larger corporations, to international entertainment companies, far more than the south Indian industries were, like the the head office of a of a Disney Hotstar or. Uh, or any of or netflix or all, all of it starts in bombay it doesn't hmm. start the other places right so there's a certain understanding of of business and organization in a in a manner that's more global i'd say 
uh, but what what they can they can pick from South India is the fact that uh, all storytellers come from a leaf of culture and they're trying to tell that culture. So here, I just feel that variety is missing. Like, for example, if you take two top writers, directors in Telugu, say Sukumar and Trivikram, two very, very prolific filmmakers, they're not from Hyderabad city. They're one's from Bhimvaram, the other's from Rajol. They're from two different villages. I think Sukumar is from Rajol. But they brought a leaf of that society, that culture that they know to cinema. Uh, all of us converse, we speak only in Telugu. We don't speak in English, actually. Uh, it's only in Bombay. I speak in English. <laughs> and uh, I guess a little bit in the office. Like the Tamil filmmakers will speak only in Tamil. Uh, it's just, it's easier when you speak. Yeah. Here it's a, a much more English driven culture uh, driven society and and the fact that we don't make english films i feel like we should also i say, i think i i just strongly feel bombay should take that front forward mm. because you can own english in india oh for sure I mean, we have more people speaking english in this country than in the united states or <laughs> the uk or whatever that is right yeah like the india is the india is the biggest country who has the maximum number of english speakers yeah there you go so i mean why why are we not making english films that's a good take so I just feel like Bombay can really drive that. And mm-hmm. it, it it worked many times. I mean, there was a film called Delhi Belly that came out yeah. many years ago. That was phenomenal. It did really well in the box office. Nice. Are you, are you, so in, in borderline, it's like South Indian movies should understand the distribution dynamics on a global level with from Bollywood. Yeah, enterprising. And enterprising. Yeah. Like how do you make more IPs, more global like distribution, okay. like all yeah. of that. Connect with more like larger corporations around mm-hmm. the world. Mm-hmm. And... Bollywood should take think about how do you take forward and like experiment with more stuff the way South India would do yeah. it. I mean, just get, how do you bring more culture into, more relatable culture into storytelling? Hmm. Relatable culture, that's a, that's a good... <coughs> See, it's, it's, there's one thing that uh, I'll quote, uh, he's a mentor of mine, I'm now partner in some in some businesses, Mr. Kishore Biani hmm. uh, of... You, you know, Future Group. Yeah. Hmm. He's he taught me one thing because I mean their retail minds are very very different. They understand India in a very different manner than we do. So he told me something about he divided India into India one, India two, India three in some ways. And India one, he said, was everyone who had domestic help is India one. Okay. And India two, so for every one India one, there's about four India two. Whether it's your cook, whether it's your driver, whether it's people supporting your lifestyle. So, unless cinema is understood by all, uh, and sometimes India 3 is people below the poverty line. Uh, it's people the government works for. It's all of those. But that is relatable culture. That's how big India is. Now, you, when you're a filmmaker, you will, or when you're talking normally, you will only talk about the people you know, the friends you live with, or the family you live with, or the society that's around you. You never look at India in a in a manner that it's much larger. Yeah. And you need to, like every 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers, there'll be a different culture and thought. We can walk down this street and your ideology or mine would be a minimum. So, so you know, on that, I had a question. Yeah. Because as a consumer, mm-hmm. business owner, and like someone who's building startups in that as well, I... I question myself this a lot so for you it will be relevant you were let's say born in India one family mm. you are born and brought up and you walk around your friends around that right mm. how do you understand India too then because you the people around you the place you're born in the place people you hang out with right it's always like India one how do you understand India two India three because if you in order to make, you make them that, accept you, you need you, to understand that. You have to make an effort and a conscious effort of having conversations, of treating people equally. Hmm. See, I think the somewhere the film set does that. Because everybody is equal on a film set. Because you need everyone to work in one rhythm. Where there's 300 people, 500 people needs to work in a rhythm to get that one shot right. So there is a sense of we, all of us eat together, everyone eat, drinks together. Like all of that is, 
is somewhere leveling right and i think that's what got us to understand it a lot more and the thing about the entertainment business is, is you can be an mba from a top university if you can be a filmmaker you can be somebody who's never seen a city lived in a in a town like madurai grown up on that culture and cinema you can still be a director so it's an equal playground because everyone's bringing different cultures and different thoughts into it i guess that's why film people understand a little more and because we are we're trying to tell our story to india 1 2 3 hmm. we want everybody to like the story right that's that's how popular cinema goes so you need to make conscious effort to talk to everyone on the set to understand everybody's mindset in order to build like a I mean, good piece no not if you just everybody on set right i'm saying everybody in your daily life hmm. how much conversation do you have with your driver how much conversation do you have with your uh, cook you how much do you know about their lives how much do you know about their families how much do you know about how they live how much do you know about the conditions that that nice. they moved from for a, from a village to a certain place what is the dream that they have hmm. so we never you won't take that time to do it because you're so busy in your everyday life so unless that is me a conscious effort with that is made is it it it's there's no way you'll understand it interesting so do you, do you feel that south indian movies that's what make them super exciting because they understand this in a much deeper way or like give me like like what do you think like what makes south indian movies super exciting uh see one is uh, there's see i mean when you say south indian first with four different industries uh, right? i know i know and everybody makes very different films uh different styles Let's of let's you stuff. work in telugu uh, and tamil i work in telugu most more yeah uh, tamil a little bit yes see telugu you we we'll, we like big things we always aspire big stuff uh you will see the most expensive films being experimented and made there at a very mainstream level hmm. uh you will see extreme risks being taken all of these like all of whether it's a bahubali or triple r all of these big films are not corporate funded they're all like individual producers <laughs> borrowing money and putting that money into it putting their house putting the that's the energy so they go all in, all in to make something spectacular now there is malayalam that has such a slice of life with a different cultural understanding great stories and i think they probably have uh, a ma- the probably the best set of writers and uh, uh, that that have come in this this time uh kannada now with uh, with kgf with kantara has taken a fully different that's now it's in the south indian industries it was always less known for some for some reason but now it's really taken a forefront and together it's such a diverse place and the beauty is each of those industries understand each other see mm. here there's so many north indian languages but it's all one here in some ways right yeah see there i'm sure there is a different culture in punjab uh there's a different culture if you want to make a bhojpuri film a different culture if you want to make a marathi film those cultures all have to start talking to one another start being respected start being treated as independent industries that's when you'll see it grow nice i love this answer huh? i love i am my understanding to this limited but i can really feel this that the understanding of all four industries in yeah. south is much bigger and better yeah, than yeah. the yeah see i mean around. see i had the, a similar thing that when 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 i came to to bombay first I, during the marathon and others i was just shocked with the fact that nobody knew what anything about south india but then i realized i don't know anything about north india either i didn't know the difference between punjabi hindi haryanvi i just didn't know all of it and i didn't know the cultures till i till i went to uh, patna i was like wow this is a different world it's not uh, what what i i've seen or i've exposed to but then i realized many people in bombay also don't know that <laughs> right very few people know what's happening in the punjab industry yeah you don't know what's happening in the marathi industry so it's it's not out there hmm. interesting but that's that's something which i think bollywood has done really well like they made everything mainstream around them <laughs> 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 like something you have to do, give kudos to them because they yeah, just yeah, orchestrated I mean, see, this oh, way very oh, well oh beautiful i'm saying see there's the fact that 
they've created a music industry that's phenomenal hmm. in india i think nobody would i mean you have there are great things that have been built out of bombay yeah you know you you talked about two <coughs> exceptional writers and then you talked about that your like malayalam movies are exceptionally good writing hmm. and you are interested in tech what do you feel like with <laughs> a- <laughs> huh? ai and chat gpt3 do you feel that the job of writers is in is in difficult space no i think it'll just aid the writers to write better it'll just have a it's like you're having another resistant of yourself right so think of it's like a, what is in stopping let's say you are are you, are you a writer no yeah right a little bit L- little bit right yeah. like you're not one of the best writers no no no, okay. no not at all so let's say what is stopping you and me together to come is like okay let's just pick up the writing skill of xyz person hmm. give it to chat gpt and ask him to try it you think i didn't try it <laughs> <laughs> you think i didn't try it yeah so i i'm, I'm, I'm did pretty, it work out i mean no it's it's it'll be a while before a ai tool can drop a script and say go and shoot this it'll be a while before that happens for sure but that's going to happen soon not soon okay. see it needs enormous amount of data enormous amount of people using it for it to understand what we want to do right like i said i'm saying how difficult would it be for an ai to understand india 1 2 and 3 right and their likings their understanding hmm so it's going to be a while before that happens yeah see the ai is is built from a different standpoint it's not built yeah to understand what people in madurai will like yet <laughs> True, true. So I'm saying it'll be a while. I'm saying in the next five, seven <laughs> years, you'll see a a radical change. But in the, for the next five years, it'll always be great assistance. Uh, it'll it will definitely replace some skills hmm. uh, in terms of design, in terms of a few things that are some basic skills. It will definitely replace basic creative stuff. But ultimately, you'll need the big creators to put it together. Nice. So like it'll and it'll be a while before you trust a machine and say yeah you go I'll give a dance to a machine and get it done. <laughs> it's true. trust. True true true. Yeah. You know trust se meko ekdam se ek ek cheez yaad aa gayi and then we go to the last the business part of it. Mm. Okay the last segment. Uh what I've noticed a pattern in Telugu and Tamil movies they always make protagonist the ideal person. Mm. Like, like look at it like you know there's a pattern a uh, that the See, protagonist will be super powerful macho man mm-hmm. but will be super soft at heart when it comes to his mo- mother angle or a family angle there will mm-hmm. be such certain angle mm-hmm. he'll always be shown like he's he's a good philanthropist mm-hmm. he does that for his community mm-hmm. okay then he is he'll go very rowdy with his trying to win his girl's heart mm-hmm. but then be super soft with her mm-hmm. but for the world he'll be like the extra macho mm-hmm. do you know there's like a pattern See, it depends on again. like all the good <laughs> ideal things. Like he used to be philanthropist. He used to be soft at heart. He used to be super macho. He'll fight for the good. He he will show that change that he wanted to do something, but now he wants to build the community. Like, see, what's what's a hero? Who's a hero? Role model. All of those things that you said mm. are that in many different manners. So, as much as what is the hero you're trying to build? You're trying to build a hero that's. a person you want to be so if i was say my first film leader shekhar kamala wrote that film because that was the chief minister he wanted to see hmm. and that's the ideal person he built uh so ultimately all heroes journeys are similar every hero has a similar journey a similar arc whatever kind of hero could be a lord rama from ramayan or could be uh Bahubali from the film Bahubali. Everybody will have arcs that are pretty similar in in nature. Yeah, that's what makes them heroes. Sometimes you you don't have to do different things. You got to do the same things differently. Interesting take. So this is a pattern. It's not really. I mean, it's a pattern based on how much cinema you saw. Yeah. So you, you <laughs> saw what ten films? <laughs> no, no, no. I've seen like a lot, but I've how seen many? all like the protagonists lead this kind of movies. I've seen. I've seen. Two, three Surya, uh, like Surya movies. I've seen Nagarjuna's movies. Mm. I've seen yours. Mm. I've seen. See, uh, you don't see me as a good guy. You'll be. <laughs> yeah. Even my hero films, I played a bad guy and became hero. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, so Wait. I have some idle good ones. I have some idle bad ones. But it's always a variety of stuff, right? And ultimately, mm. you want. 
the hero to win and you would want that person only if you can relate to him if he can do things that are ideal that are right uh by what you say right ultimately that's the guy you want mm. dude i'm now that i'm thinking about it like how many movies i've seen with south india but huh? i've seen all of this from this pattern only that's why yeah. like i have a very See, biased like like, judgment on like what i used to hear a lot of this right when uh, they were used to tell the story of ramayan or i have a habit of telling friends that who don't know of the ramayan or the mahabharata i keep mm. picking stories and telling it to them but there was every time there was i used to tell stories of the mahabharata they used to be interested because it was politics it was greed there was a certain violence to many things uh, and con- because of many m- multiple yeah. characters but there's a sense of everybody feels like they know the ramayan and mm. the fact that okay there is a certain uh, textbook way of how ram should be or this is what it is but look at the the following that ram has as a hero you would have been you heard i mean i'm saying everybody believes that those are the stories but the number of temples that are built for him hmm. whether it's in india or across the world the significance that that story had that was told eons ago is still being told in the newest manner possible you uh, religious people make it their identity politics make it their identity regular everyday people make it their identity because that's the hero you want yeah this yeah the simplistic ideal man my image, yeah. image in your head of yeah. of a person is yeah. a, and all of what these characteristics that you said he yeah. gives charity he is soft with the person that he has He's, he he loves humble. yeah he he's tough and he fights the men that he has to fight all of these are those traits yeah these are traits of, uh, and, derived out of ramayana yeah, yeah and and these traits never will get old hmm. in whatever story you're trying to tell it very i never thought of it this way but yeah mahabharat and ramayana they have like i've grown up watching both of them hmm. and my fam like my dad is a huge fan of all of these and we've always had these conversation dinner table conversation would be this Good. we want that but i genuinely feel that i understand ramayan way better than mahabharat because of the same thing because it are like one yeah. set of route yeah. to follow yeah. there there's too many people there's a lot of <laughs> a lot of follow yeah, every time you yeah. look at mahabharat you see it from a different angle yeah. because yeah. there's a lot yeah. of things but here there is a certain journey and everybody knows that story clearly mm-hmm. you're not confused but is there a pattern of manufacturing a hit so i tell you how so see, if you look at youtube videos right there's a pattern <coughs> so one youtube video make and the next youtube video want to make it better so you have a pattern like okay my thumbnail should be like this my title should be like this the first half should be yeah, like this yeah, the mid yeah. should be then so is there a pattern of making a hit film see a regular commercial success there will be some patterns to be followed there will be some formulas that you can all get right and it will be reasonably correct okay. it might not it if you there's definitely guidelines that you can follow that will make a reasonably correct story give me three four guidelines which you feel like for a commercially successful hit because you have been part of bahubali that's been wild yeah. and you have been part of small really niche independent stuff, independent stuff yeah. as well so see like the one is the clarity of who this film is for a commercial film is first for a larger group of audience it's not a niche it's not uh to engage with a certain set of people it is for everybody to like it so how do you decide that common factor so, in everybody so i'm saying now if you're taking a story of a hero you want to tell a hero story now you've taken the patterns of what you've spoken earlier right mm-hmm. there's a certain hero rhythm to things okay now are you going to make it an entertaining hero are you how are you going to empathize with these people what are the emotional chords that you're going to connect and tell the story in and if you are hitting all of those beats what is your right midpoint what is your right pre climax what is the right climax if there are certain rhythms that you can follow and say okay this is the set pattern of a commercial film which will go reasonably okay but the successful ones if you want to make our story is told for the first time unless you walk into the theater and feel like this is the first time you're feeling this mm-hmm. this is the first time i'm ex- experiencing an emotion that i did not 
those are films that become really really successful see bahubali will have all of the the rules of what a right story should have but it will have an extravagance in the experience that it offered that will be like okay now this you are feeling for the first time ever the 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 emotion were the same which we have seen like the victory the bad guy yeah. the good guy but add an extravagant scale like everything was yeah. super extravagant and underlined those emotions to the largest degree hmm. and that's what that's what mainstream is that's what commercial is is underlining mainstream emotions well see the a certain niche of the audience will think that there's a certain cliche to it hmm. because it's underlined like that but a larger auditorium will understand that Yeah. So that's that's how it works. So what like the the top three emotions which are like super mainstream would be love, victory, and love, revenge. revenge. <laughs> nice. Revenge is a is a great emotion to tell. Love is a beautiful emotion to tell. Togetherness and family is a great emotion. To tell. Any a hero bringing people together is mm. is a great emotion to tell. A bond between brother sister is a great emotion to tell. any any bond that can be underlined and have an em- and can strike an emotional chord see everybody will strike emotional chords with parents siblings if they have siblings uh everybody will strike their basic human emotions right you need to make sure which chords are you touching in this story that you're trying to tell hmm. <coughs> interesting the i have a, I have a last question on this mm-hmm. okay and that's something that i read again about everything that we do as an individual is consciously or subconsciously we are doing it for a signaling value we all have a signaling value that's what we do like we want explain to signal that, explain uh, so that. so we want to signal something like mm-hmm. express something maybe through the clothes we wear mm-hmm. the stories we do the like the work we do or the kind of movies we act into mm-hmm. like we are trying to signal something out of out of us it and it's so to like no matter what you do everything out of your living room which you're doing mm. is for some signaling value for sure right Understood. so so when you do the movies like what is the signaling you're trying to give like what is that one signal is what is the signal that i'm trying to put together yeah. is the fact that as an audience if you walk into my film you will see things for the first time that you haven't seen before that's always in your mind that's always on my mind i just feel like cinema is an experiential medium and if you're walking into that theater whether it's inside of a submarine whether it's a war whether it's inside the middle of politics i'd like you to be in a world and uh, bring a different exp- world for people experience that with me and mm. with these characters in the movie let's say you want to build a narrative mm. around you and do you choose those movies they say you know like there was a time when akshay kumar was only choosing patriotic movies and there was a time when he was only choosing an indian going outside like experimenting I, in that i don't know i don't i don't know if cinema can, i i can never choose stuff like that you can never do that to me i think this it's not me who's choosing the story that cho- story is coming and choosing me in some ways right it's uh, that's how it is it's there's a certain organic energy to things why you have to play that person there'll be a reason for it and i and that's mostly how i built my life it doesn't matter what i'm going to play as long as whatever that is because that's the beauty of not expecting right i mm. can't sit and decide in my office i want to make a submarine movie <laughs> unless i met sankalp who has had that vision to make a certain film so to me i just hope i keep meeting newer and newer people who have great ideas to tell and great stories to tell and i'd like to be part of those and what do you value more quantity or quality quality for sure man quantity is very you want to do less work but better work yeah if i can do a lot of better work then it's great but <laughs> but it's hard it's i think it good things take time and mm. i think uh, i'm not somebody who can i used to be that but i think as you grow and you learn more and more you feel like you know lesser and lesser mm. and uh, the time you take that decision you want to make sure many things are ticked off before you just went ahead and did it But right. now it's like here you go is this right not right how do you switch on your artist mode and how do you switch off and then turn on your business mode because let's say I you're doing so i'm asking let's say you're doing bahubali you're like the biggest project of your life yeah. you're working on it and then 
your sports team reached finals and you really yeah. need to go and give them a pep talk yeah. and talk to like a large corporate mm-hmm. to get land them a deal mm. so like who do you choose at that time what do you do let other people <laughs> handle it kya kya scene hota oh no if i'm on set and shooting i don't i don't even know what i do like there's no sense of business there's no sense of any like I, nobody reaches me mm. so it's i'm just that person but the problem is i realized after i'm done with set there'll be some influences of that character that will be rubbing on some decisions that i make for sure because that's how you behave most day that's how you are most day mm-hmm. so there'll be some leakages from my story to this but not the other way around okay <laughs> so did you get evil after <laughs> after bahubali and we like no okay. no i'm saying you your vision will start getting bigger you want bigger things you want to you'll think like a king you'll you'll want things that you are doing might see, will seem very very small your vision will be yeah. much larger and i i actually firmly noticed this when i did uh, i actually it was a small role that i played in the in the ntr biopic so i played the role of chandrababu naidu the uh, the ex chief minister of andhra pradesh now this is the first time i'm playing somebody in real right mm. it's a real person that i saw all my life as the cm for two terms 10 years of my life 11 years of my life and uh, and i was playing him young which means i didn't see that part of it mm. i saw him when he was older and i i mean i was lucky enough to spend a lot of time with him understand and and he narrated back the incident of the film that the or the part that i was portraying okay. of what he remembers of that incident to me i realized just because i was now not being somebody else i was being a person that many people know more than they know me right it's he was chief minister of the state and my office going because the funny thing that schedule was like you shot four days and after that next two months later they another four days that kind of stuff was happening but that time i realized there was a certain discipline a certain rhythm in how i operated that i never did before and as i was wondering i said why am i so correct this time <laughs> then i realized there was that man was influencing me so much because of the sense of discipline and authority he had mm-hmm. over things he was doing so i was trying to be that person in some strange way nice but that's that's an opportunity for you that because you get to be yeah, yeah. so many so people i'm saying now i'm conscious about it mm. earlier i wasn't it was just happening and i was wondering i said why did i take that call at that point then you start realizing who you are and a little more cognizant about yeah, the fact yeah. that that's it's happening yeah. do you want to enter politics at any time no oh, man i like i like i like to tell stories in movies i mean politicians are great storytellers that's why i use them and make political films <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of drama you you never intend to do, get into it no man i see never say never to anything but uh, you never thought of it till now yes yeah. so it's like this life will my life at least so far has been putting me in places that Here you go this is what you need to do figure out learn it do it mm-hmm. so that's pretty much i say whatever i'm supposed to do in the future i think i will if time comes i will have to learn it and do it oh perfect thanks man thanks for doing this Thank i just sir. have last two one line questions which we ask everybody okay okay sure. it's uh, first is like what drives you now because you have a great life you have money you have business investments going on like I don't think to live a comfortable life you need to work anymore. Like As, so what drives you now? <laughs> In fact you have reached people know you fame is there for you. I don't know if you don't if if you want more fame more money that's never ending uh, but still so it's what like this, drives like, you right now. What drives me like okay like let me give you an example you said okay people know me. So I was like okay Bahubali is so popular that everybody who seen that film knows who, who the hell I am. So for me it's like a responsibility now to make sure I deliver something awesome uh, because otherwise it's like a let down right in some ways it's like so many people know you and whether they're expecting it or not the minute they see me I just want to them to feel as awesome as they did when they saw me last so that is the constant effort that will be driving me as an actor that okay is this the newest version or the most coolest version I can offer now so I think that that drives me a lot and the fact that the second piece that drives me is the opportunity that's available and the fact that i'm in a position to put a lot of that together and really be really change the way things can happen in the future does that pressure ever that's make not, you anxious 
that's not pressure but uh, no like the pressure of your last success yeah i mean yeah the, the, i mean yeah for bahubali for sure now you're like okay now what do you do <laughs> right uh, like and and, I, and it's strange i remember there was that's one thing that i got to tell you when you said this this is after my first film i was shooting for dammar dum then hmm. and there was a filmmaker that i met his name is uh, mr amir amir sultan hmm. so tamil filmmaker made an amazing film called parthiviran uh, with karthi it's karthi's first film and i met him at that point and uh, this is for some a story that he had which he wanted to tell me and he looked at me and said what are you going to play now he said i said what do you mean sir he said you played a chief minister of a state he's saying there's nothing bigger than that that you can play right now he's saying unless you play a bad guy i don't think i can accept you i said what do you mean he said now if you go fall in love with girl run around college gilles and all while you care i already seen you as this and which was actually true till the point i played a negative guy it wasn't enough mm. you know what i'm saying so i need to constantly see i'm an extreme guy so i which means i need to find extreme characters to tell and each time i tell it it should be fun interesting so next extreme for you maybe is the star wars kind of stuff which you want to do no Or next the extreme is actually video. my next extreme is actually out 10th of march okay which is a show on netflix that okay. i get what's it about uh, a show is called rana naidu uh it's a it's a family drama of a bunch of gangsters and fixers nice so it's so and it's me and my uncle playing father and son and this is the first time we've done anything together uh it's a it's a dark family drama okay and uh, it's a narrative that i would never do on film but it it leads to a great long form hmm. and uh, got to work with karan and shuman who's done mirzapur and others so we so i got to learn a lot of new things from it and to me this is the first time i've done anything like that and i fun is i got my uncle to do something for the first time which is extremely different from what he has done so far so wh- when is it coming out 10th march 10th, 10th of march on what platform on netflix and are you excited for the drama what do you mean by dark like give me one example or well, will let, it, will let, it let, kill let, the suspense let me just say it's a it's a complex family with complex fo- problems mm mm-hmm. is it like the godfather version of india some kind of stuff no no it's not, not that it's not that at all mm. you 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 you'll see it oh, we love it yeah. i love gangsters <laughs> is there yeah it's gangsters in their lives and their families nice the last question of the day is for me that uh, it has is two parts one is for everybody young watching this entrepreneurial hustlers people who want to become you know way better than who they are today what do you feel in india what's the next big opportunity well first if everybody for for young people i think understanding artificial intelligence and everything that it can do in our lives will probably be a very important thing in the future uh it wasn't for us so far growing up but it will be quite a i think it it'll cause a different way in terms of how we look at life So I think it's important for all of them to be focused and understand what that is because it's not something that's taught in schools. Yeah. Nobody teaches anybody to uh so I think it's it's important how you plan your career. You can't build a career that AI can just replace. So all of these uh so I think that's that's an important part. Uh and the second thing is like there's something where everyone has a fear of what will somebody think if i fail at this business what will someone think if i don't get this right i think that's it's it's fine it's fine to fail it's fine to you just got to keep moving you can't put yourself down i think so for anybody who is young it's like you have a long life ahead because at that point it'll feel like the end of it yeah but 5 years later it probably won't even matter uh what is important to know is that nothing is constant everything is subject to change and everything will pass that's that's what i'd leave you with that's that's something i love i would love to accept but i am in in those shoes as well because i feel like everything's done yeah. just out of one bad moment but yeah. i think we got to live with it and we got to understand what's guru the second part of the question was how can we make this better like what should we do because in your experience how can i make this podcast the best podcast ever what one or two things i should focus on with the next guest that should, that will make this better really better 
See, one is, uh, I'm sure you, now, how many, how many interviews have you done so far? 100 plus. 100 plus. I think it's important for you to now break that into data and understand it well. Sometimes what we do is we keep working nonstop and we broadly know what's happening, but we're not in the detail of saying, okay, now this is the point they went away. This is the point they're interested in. Like if you're able to understand that auditorium and your audience well, uh, whether it's through comments, whether it's now today you have like so many AI tools that uh-huh. say, okay, here you go, here he left, here he came, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Just take all of that data and keep constantly analyzing whether it's right or not. And make sure that you're offering something which people can take back and say, wow, after this podcast, this is what I thought, but this is how I think today. So I mm. think you got to underline your why. Why are you making this? What do you want to communicate? And make sure that's underlined. Whether it's me who's an actor as a guest, whether tomorrow you have an astronaut, doesn't matter, but your why has to be answered each time you've completed a show. Nice. So we got to, I, I, I like it. So we, we need to just make sure and boil down everything to one single why. Like this is what this we is got what, out of this person. Yes. Hmm. And change the way people think. Love it. Thank you so much for Thank the you, feedback sir. and spending time. Thank you. It was fun, man. Thank you. Thanks a lot.